OpenAI has launched a new data set and that data set is called MLE. In this video, I'm going to show you what is MLE, how did they build MLE and what kind of implications it might have in the future. First of all, MLE here stands for Machine Learning Engineering. This is very similar to what they call as SWE or Software Engineering Bench data set. This is a data set that has been used by companies like Cognition for Devon to measure how good these agents are to solve a software engineering problem. Keep that in mind, we'll come back to this again. So this new data set is primarily eva for evaluating machine learning agents on machine learning problems. The question here is, what do you define as a machine learning problem? So to solve that, OpenAI actually went to Kaggle. If you're not familiar with Kaggle, Kaggle is a machine learning platform where you can go uh, host competition, participate in competitions, win lots and lots of money. And there are uh, different uh, middle tiers, like there are Kaggle Grandmasters, Kaggle Master, Kaggle uh, Dataset, um, there are multiple different tiers. So I've, 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 I've been uh, on Kaggle uh, for quite some time. There was a time where I was very addicted, not anymore. I was mostly onto the notebook, notebook track. Uh, back then it was called, uh, uh, you know, Kaggle Notebooks, Kaggle Kernels. Now it's called Kaggle Code and uh, competition is one of the most challenging ones. You need to have uh, really cutting edge machine learning techniques for you to develop a lot of things. I'm not trying to, you know, compare Kaggle competition with real world problems. That's a totally different topic. But Kaggle has its own competition and you have to go solve a competition. When you solve a competition, there are certain things that you have to pay attention to. One, you're given an overview of a problem, then you've got a data. You, typically on Kaggle, when you've got a data, there are two types of data. One, you would see a training data. The second one, you would see test data. And uh, training data will have the labeled uh, answer. Test data will not have the label answer. Then you build a model or whatever you use and then submit it. When you submit it, you will have typically something called a leaderboard. A leaderboard would evaluate your model, how good your model is, and then it would show where do you stand on something called as a public leaderboard, and then there is a private leaderboard. So this is typically what Kaggle is. Now what OpenAI has done is, they've gone to Kaggle, and they have taken a bunch of Kaggle competitions, and they've tried to figure out, okay, if I were to run an AI model, not just a model, an AI agent, how good the AI agent can get at least a single medal. So like I said, Kaggle has got multiple medals, a gold medal, a silver medal, and a bronze medal. And the way you get a silver medal or a bronze medal or a gold medal depends primarily upon number of participants on the competition. So a competition with lesser participants would give you much easier option to get a bronze medal. A participant, uh, a competition with a lot of co participants will uh, make it really hard for you to even get a bronze medal. So having this uh, context, you need to understand that what OpenAI is claiming is their uh, flagship model, O1 preview, with AID scaffolding, we'll come back to this, what does it mean? Has managed to get a bronze medal in almost 17% of competition. So if you have got 100 competition, in this case, they've taken 75 competition. But in terms of percentage, if you have got 100 competition, at least in 16 competition, Kaggle's, uh, sorry, OpenAI's O1 preview with AID scaffolding managed to get at least a bronze medal. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of impact it is for the machine learning community. But there, there are certain very interesting nuances on this paper. First of all, the data set is open source. So they've uh, given you the data set. If you were to use the data set, if you were to use this data set, evaluate a different model, you can go ahead and then do this. One thing that you may not be able to do is to completely reproduce what OpenAI has done because there are like a bunch of things uh, that they said you can't do. Why? Because they're running an agent. Some agents are run for 24 hours and you and I do not have access to OpenAI models to run models at that uh, level of scale because one, we will not have a compute or we will not have tokens. So as discussed in section six, users may find it difficult to fully reproduce our experiments. But if you were to do this with a different model, OpenAI has made it possible or will make it possible for you to use the data set, use the code base and use everything else. So now what is happening here? So what is happening here is that uh, in an MLE bench data set, you've got, uh, this is basically an offline Kaggle competition environment. So you've got this agents competing for medals. You've got like gold medal, you've got silver medal, you've got a bronze medal. So for each competition, you get a competition description. You get the data set, which is trained. 
test sample submission. So one important thing that I probably overlooked when I was explaining Kaggle is you also get a sample uh, submission data set. A sample submission data set is something that will help you understand how to submit the final result. So one thing that OpenAI has made sure is that, that these agents are not just going and filling in random numbers and submitting, which is typically a lot of Kagglers do actually. They start a baseline and sometimes the baseline is just literally having a random number and then submitting the sample submission just to understand, evaluate the kind of data set. So you've got train, you've got test, you've got sample submission. And then on leaderboard, you've got three medals, medal, gold medal, silver medal, and bronze medal. And finally, you have got the agent has got like a bunch of options to do. Now what CAG, what OpenAI has done here is that they've done this for 75 competition. And when they did this, they did not just take a raw LLM as it is like just a large language model endpoint and do this. No, that's not what they did. What they did is they combined it with a couple of open source as scaffolds, like methods, how you can turn an LLM into an agent. And there are like bunch of these scaffolds that they evaluated. And the best one that they got is a scaffold called AIDE. So combining OpenAI O1 preview with AIDE scaffold managed to give them a bronze medal in 17% instance approximately. And they find this, like this percent performance significantly improves when these agents are given multiple attempts per competition. So now what you have done is you've just given only one attempt. If you have seen my podcast of AMO, the artificial intelligence machine learning uh, math Olympiad, then you would probably be able to connect the dots here. If you have not seen it, I'll link it in the YouTube description. So when you increase the number of passes, this is almost what O1 is doing. Then the competition score, uh, rather than getting go bronze medal in 17% of competitions, it manages to get a bronze in 34% close to, you know, double when you increase the number of uh, iterations to eight. So similarly, GPT-40 scores 8.7%. So you can see that GPT-40 scores 8.7% when you give 24 hours to attempt each competition. But when you give 100 hours, it gets 11.8. A very interesting observation here is that even with 100 hours, GPT-4 could go one little, GPT-40 could go one little 12% while O1 preview manages to get 16.9% in the baseline, like one pass. So in general, we found that agents can score well on competitions that can be solved with well-known approaches like on Kaggle, typically, let's say you've got a Quora uh, duplicate question finding answer, or you've got a, a classic uh, time series forecasting answer. So for problems that are well-known approaches, it says like the agents can do well. But one of the things that I've found agents are really, really, really bad at is when they encounter a bug, they try to solve it, they cannot solve it, then they go into a loop. They try to recover from mistake. This is something that you would have noticed if you have used cursor, you would have noticed if you use replicate agent. Once it starts making mistake, uh, there is it is like pure downhill, it's a pure disaster and chaos. There is no coming back until a human knowledge comes in and interferes. So as part of this paper, like I said, they've uh, released the data set and they've also shared how did they build the data set and everything. Take a look at this example. There are three kinds of agents, GPT-40 with MLAB. This is a scaffolding technique. GPT-40 with open hands, GPT-40 with aid. Now you've got different steps. One is like, you know, step zero, step one, and randomly step eight, 118 is like this. And then you've got different methods. Now, what is this AIDE? That's a very interesting place. Now, AIDE came quite a while back, April 4, 2024. Human level performance in data science competitions. They said, by using the framework or the scaffolding method that these researchers have created, you can literally take a normal LLM endpoint and make them solve Kaggle competitions um, much more efficiently. So. AIDE has achieved human level performance on Kaggle competitions. H2 is a popular company that hires a lot of Kaggle grandmasters. So they have used more than 60 Kaggle competitions to showcase that AIDE can build a solution for these kind of. Now, how does AIDE work? So if you go to AIDE, I'm going to click this button, then you'll see the scaffolding happen. So let's go to a competition that says forecast retail store sales. Now, once you go here, you can see how it actually codes. 
so it starts from something and then there are like different solutions and it just like stops in there and then only one track one tree it's a tree based search it goes deep and then finally ends up with the final solution and you would see a similar uh, attempt for multiple different competitions you can see all these things this is made with sg boost uh, this is made with um, i guess um, just a normal svm you have gone ahead with housing value prediction it's a linear regression and you see multiple different solutions coming so you can see first solution this is gradient boosting gbm and uh, here you can see this is literally svm here then this is uh, a linear regression here and this is uh, again linear model um, linear regression in this case but elastic net so this is random forest so and random forest is where it doubles down and it goes and goes and goes this is the same approach that open ai has taken to create the o1 plus 8 so here there are three main components there is a solution generator there is an evaluator then the solution selector so this is a tree search solution space tree search as you can see here and this is what open ai has done with a d i a i d e which gave them a really good output now like i said uh, there are different medals medals are based on uh, different teams and kaggle has managed to get good um, outcomes like bronze medal on 17% uh, of instances that we have seen one interesting observation is that CAG, uh, OpenAI has also tried to figure out if these agents just literally went and tried to copy the solution because plagiarism is a big problem and OpenAI wanted to make sure that uh, these are just not going to internet and then trying to find solution and then get the answer back or maybe it's not part of their training data what they have figured out is that for every competition, the, the the notebook or the solution that was presented before, they could not find more than 60% of uh, matching similarity. So they kind of say that this is this means that there is not a lot of plagiarism. So similarity is below 60%. There are a lot more details about how they went about it. There is a very interesting uh, prompt. If you were to spend some time on this paper, I'll str I strongly encourage you to start with this. So it talks about like the role of the agent and what the agent should do and uh, what kind of benchmarks and the other information that you have got. So one interesting section on this paper is that impact on AGI preparedness. If AI agents become capable of autonomously performing ML research, they could have numerous positive impacts such as accelerating scientific progress in healthcare, climate science or other domains, accelerating safety and alignment research of models and fostering economic growth so basically what they're trying to say is okay rather than me as a human with my human knowledge trying to build a system that would end up becoming an AGI what if I can create like four or five childs of mine and all these childs are specialists they've got enormous knowledge of the world which in this case are the agents and if these agents were to work together and build the model how would it be so this is what they're alluding to here so Agents capable of performing open-ended ML research tasks at the level of improving their own training code could improve the capabilities of frontier model significantly faster than human researchers. So they are saying that there could be ha some harm there or it could also help. So they're trying to be very uh, uh, careful about it. If you have uh, you know seen reinforcement learning very long time ago, uh, not very long time ago, but when companies like DeepMind and OpenAI started, they were quite focused on reinforcement learning and this is what similarly used to happen on reinforcement learning and like the agent that they're trying to build right now kind of seems like they're trying to bring back that kind of a culture here so i'm not a reinforcement learning expert but what you see here is they're trying to build something that can uh, make mistakes uh, learn from mistakes uh, improve from mistakes and then iteratively obsessively go solve the problem again and again and again taking multiple number of hours I'm not sure if it is going to lead to AGI, but I can be pretty sure that this will create a much better model, just like they've created here. And then they've said that on 17% of data set or competition, they've managed to get a Kaggle bronze medal. It's a very interesting approach that they've taken. I'm uh, looking forward to see if anybody is going to use this data set, fine tune their model or uh, use this approach. Sorry, this is not a fine tuning uh, data set, but use this data set to evaluate the quality of the model and then see how it is going to go. But at this point, if there is a model that can do research um, like obsessively 
I don't think there is any model other than O1 Preview can do such a good job. So it'll be interesting to compare this score with other models. It'll be also interesting to see how much time O1 Previews took because this is a model that seems to be taking a lot of time, very similar like how human researchers would behave. But overall, this is a very interesting perspective. Before we finish the video, I would like to one thing emphasize is that a lot of people have said on social media as well, and this is an age old debate that Kaggle is not equal to machine learning engineering or Kaggle is not equal to real world data science. That is a question that you should probably ask if this data set is a representative of what you want to call as machine learning engineering. But either way, I think this is a really good approach of combining engineering and science and then see what is it going to do. Maybe Sam Altman is going to get Nobel Prize for this. I'm just joking. See you in another video. Happy prompting.